Hello everyone, I hope you're doing good. Here I am today with yet another video on my YouTube channel. Today we'll be covering the basics of an electric circuit. Well, to be frank, this topic in itself is so big that it will be unfair on my part to cover this topic in one tutorial. Therefore, I will be making a couple of more videos related to the same topic. Let's call this video the first part of the upcoming series. In this tutorial, the things that you will be covering will be the meaning of electricity, the meaning of electric circuit, you will see some symbols of electrical components, you will also study about the types of circuits, you will know what is the relation and difference between current, voltage and resistance in the form of Ohm's law. So proceeding ahead, let's cover the first topic that is electricity. Electricity is nothing but the flow of electric charge. In today's times, all of us have so many electrical appliances at our homes, at our workplaces, be it in our schools or even colleges. It is impossible to survive without electrical appliances in today's times. But do you think without electricity, the, these appliances can even work? Mm, no, I doubt so. We also say that electricity is a form of energy that can be changed to other forms. To be frank, there are different kinds of energy conversions as well. Energy can be converted from electrical to mechanical, chemical to electrical, light energy can be converted to heat energy, so on and so forth. This reminds me of an example of a thunderstorm or a lightning. Have you ever noticed that when lightning occurs, the light energy changes to which form of energy? At times, there is wind blowing around. At times, there is rain. At times, there is sound. So, so many energy conversions are there around us as well. Let us take some time out and think about any 10 energy conversions that may be happening right now around us. Do think of it and let me know in my comment section. Proceeding further, let us now talk about conductors and non-conductors. As we know, electricity is a flow of charge and this flow may need a path on which it can walk through. Like for us humans, we need a street or a path which we can walk and reach our destination. In a similar manner, the electricity can start from a particular path and then reach its destination and this path is known as conductor. And then there is a medium or a path that does not allow the flow of electricity. That medium is known as insulator or a non-conductor. There are different types of examples of conductors and non-conductors around us. Some of the conductors can be steel, gold and aluminium, while some insulators are plastic, rubber and wood. Do you know of any other examples of conductors and insulators? I'm sure you may know. This brings us to the most important topic of today's tutorial and that is electric circuit. Looking carefully at this diagram, which is also known as a circuit diagram or a schematic diagram, we can see that various electrical components, in this case a battery, a lamp and a switch, are interconnected with the help of a conducting wire. So we can say that electrical circuit is nothing but a connection of various electrical components through a closed path. That is what I have written in this slide as well. It can be defined as a way or a path of transferring electrical current. As I had told, this path is always closed 
or we can say it follows a closed loop. If the loop opens, of course, the circuit will break and the lamp may not glow. So we have to take care of the fact that whenever we use any electrical circuit, it should be a complete circuit or a closed loop. As you saw here, various symbols were shown of the different electrical components. I have some symbols here. Do you know what are these symbols of? These symbols are of various electrical components that we will be using in the future. The first represents an LED. Second symbol is of a resistor. If you remember this, I have shown you the symbols of resistor and various other electrical components in my first tutorial as well. If you want, you can refer back to my first video to learn about them or refresh your memory again. Third, I have shown you here a capacitor, then a voltage source or a battery, and lastly, the symbol of a switch. In this case, it's an open switch. Going ahead, let's talk about different types of circuits. In today's tutorial, we will be covering the main types of circuits. And these two types of circuits are, as I had told earlier as well, open circuit and closed circuit. I think by now you can just understand by looking at the diagram that how the current flows from one point to the other and what happens in the open circuit. I have a picture here. Can you tell me which of these is the electrical diagram or the circuit diagram of a closed circuit and an open circuit? Well, I think you can figure it out by now, don't you? So, in these circuits, what does flow? Of course, the current flows around these circuit. But what exactly is current? How do we define current? Current is something which flows over time through a given point. It is defined as a flow of electric charge, or to be more precise, rate of flow of electric charge from a beginning point or a starting point to a destination point. The current always flows from positive to negative side. Electric current is measured by dividing voltage with resistance or by dividing coulomb over time. Its unit is amperes. It can be written as capital A or AMP. It's totally up to you, but the mostly followed unit is A. And finally, the current is measured using a meter. Emitters are mainly of two types, analog and digital. It is totally up to you whichever emitter you want to use, but the more precise value obviously comes in a digital scenario. So in today's time, the more preferred devices are digital devices. And now, with the invention of multimeter, no need of purchasing an ammeter, an ohmmeter, or a voltmeter separately. All these things can be measured in one digital device known as multimeter. Let's go to the next topic, and that is resistance. As the name suggests, resistance is something that resists, stops, or limits the flow of current. Resistance is measured by dividing voltage by current across a given circuit. Its unit is ohms with the sign that I've shown here. It is said that good conductors have low resistance. It is but obvious a path through which electricity or electric charge can flow very easily without any stoppage, of course that circuit will have a low resistance and a path which does not allow electric current to flow through it will have high resistance. To limit the flow of current, mostly the circuit devices or the circuits that we make, we introduce a resistor in it. So, you might remember in the first video also I had told you how to find the value of a resistor 
using the color code. Or another method of finding resistance is by using ohmmeter. Again, the same logic applies here as well. Ohmmeters are also of two types, analog and digital. But which one is more preferred? I think you can guess it by now. Next is the value of voltage. But before voltage, we should know what is an electric charge. Electric charge is always positive or negative. Positive charges and negative charges repel each other. And if we have a positive and a negative charge, then those charges will attract each other. We define voltage as a potential difference in charge between two points in an electric field. Or in most simpler words, how much the electric charge wants to move from one point to the other. We can find voltage by multiplying current with resistance and its unit is volts, often written as V. We can measure voltage again using the same old voltmeter, but in today's times, as we all know, multimeters are in. So we can measure the voltage, current, resistance, even power, and a lot of other things using a multimeter. I think you should go out and check how does a multimeter look like. Well, last topic here that we will be covering today is an Ohm's law. What exactly is Ohm's law? Ohm's law states that electric current is directly proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance. Well, not only this, we can also change the same definition into two other forms. This definition that I mentioned here is the one which has been shown in the central diagram which is a part of Ohm's law triangle. As I said you, I is directly proportional to V and inversely proportional to R. But the same values can be rewritten as voltage is directly proportional to the multiplicative value of I and R or resistance is directly proportional to V and it is inversely proportional to I. I have an assignment for you. Why don't you find out the applications of Ohm's law that can be used in today's times? After you find out the applications, let's just do a very small example. I have a circuit here with an LED, resistor, battery and a switch connected. Through the circuit, we say that the battery that we have connected or the power source that we have connected is of 5 volts and the value of resistor is 100 ohms. Can you tell me how much current will be flowing through the circuit? Can you calculate it and tell me? Well. I don't think it should take more than a couple of seconds to, for you to figure out that this circuit is open. So do you think any current will flow? No. The answer is 0 amperes. And why? Of course, because you can see it from the circuit itself. It is an open circuit. The current cannot flow through the circuit. But what if the circuit was closed? How would you have calculated the values here? It is in this case that we use the Ohm's law triangle or the Ohm's law as such. For such an example, what we will be doing is we will be dividing the value of voltage with resistance to find the total value of current, which here comes out to be 0 0.05 amperes. It was not that difficult, as difficult you might have thought it would have been. I hope this tutorial of mine cleared some of the concepts of an electric circuit. In the part 2 of the series, I will be covering the series and parallel connection and how do we calculate the values of current, voltage and resistance in a series circuit and a parallel circuit. Till then, take care of yourself and your family 
and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, comment and share with me any other topic that you want me to discuss. Take care.